so, um, we've seen increased use of new adjuvant chemotherapy in last decade or last time. Uh, American data show that in five years alone, it went up of 10%. Um, an analysis, and it's expected to increase further. This is particularly based on new recommendations of uh, for neoadjuvant treatment in triple negative breast cancers and those that are referred to positive based on on um, result of some studies and this was incorporated in the last Sun Garden consensus as well. Uh, next slide. And uh, as we all know, the uh, neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy can do a lot of um, at least partial and also total complete pathological responses, both to the primary tumor and to the um, metastatic lymph nodes, regional lymph nodes. And uh, you see some data here that the rate of the um, total uh, complete pathological response depends on the tumor type, the biology of the tumor and the highest they can be seen in triple negatives and uh, HER2 positive tumors. So this all has to be taken in account when we talk about the surgery after new adjuvant chemotherapy. Next slide, please. Now, when we, uh, this is of course here not to be read all of it that is on this slide. It's just a thorough analysis of the uh, sensitivity, specific, uh, specificity, and so on about different techniques in order to stage the uh, axilla before the treatment. Uh, so we all know that clinical uh, clinical uh, examination uh, alone is completely unreliable, but even if we do some imaging modalities, uh, those uh, results are far from being perfect. So in the end, um, we, uh, we come to that that by doing some, uh, like, let's say, ultrasonically uh, imaging staging plus um, uh, some uh, or a core biopsy of FNA of the uh, of the lymph nodes cannot replace the surgical staging, which is definitely much more reliable. Next, uh, next slide. And uh, now in the time of uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy, which uh, brought such a revolution in the last 25 years, we can say now already 25 years in breast cancer surgery, um, uh, this technique was brought also uh, uh, to patients that are treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And there was uh, an old dilemma when, when to do, when to stage axilla, whether to do it before neoadjuvant chemotherapy or after. And those who proposed um, to do it before, they had some reasons for that. They said that the technique is more reliable, it's higher identification rate, lower false negative rate, and that that information before you start other treatments is very important to know what was actually the status of the axillary lymph nodes be, uh, before you started the treatment. However, there were also those who are uh, more um, uh, more inclined to do the central note after the new adjuvant and uh, saying that it does spare you one surgery and possibly, which is now probably most important, it spares you uh, axillary lymph node dissection if the uh, metastatic lymph nodes become negative. So most of the guidelines today advocate central lymph node biopsy after, after new adjuvant chemotherapy. Next slide, please. Now, I've said that uh, doing sentinel lymph node after neoadjuvant is technically less effective, reliable than doing it before because of all the changes to the tissue that, uh, uh, that become apparent uh, because of the treatments. So uh, when there were several studies done and um, because of the higher false negative rate, uh, you can see some here, there's a few important trials listed here and the false negative rates. And now the consensus is at the moment that in order to get the false negative rate lower than 10%, which is somehow uh, we are uh, convinced that it's an acceptable, acceptable false negative rate, that we should do the 
uh, dual tracer technique. So it means the isotope plus the dye and at least three sentinel lymph nodes removed. In this case, uh, then uh, we can be um, convinced that we are below the 10% of false negative rate after the new adjuvant chemotherapy. Next slide, please. And this is just illustration, also the last, also NCCN American guidelines, uh, they uh, propose the same technique and as we will come to this a bit later, or to do some, some sort of the targeted uh, uh, lymph node dissection after the new adjuvant. Next slide, please. There is a study, although uh, which is a bit more, um, does not concur with the current, let's say, uh, routine. And this is a publication from Milan when they were doing, um, they did, this is a retrospective status of their uh, um, patient population when they actually performed the usual technique for the new, uh, for the sentinel lymph node biopsy after the new adjuvant chemotherapy in patients. Um, that became clinically not negative. And uh, we see that in many patients, actually down, uh, it's a square box in red, uh, there were um, in many patients still positive lymph nodes uh, after the, uh, after the um, chemotherapy. Next slide. However, at least based on their results, the, although using the usual technique for the sentinel lymph node, the uh, regional uh, relapse rate was very low also in those patients that were actually not following the same uh, technique. It means dual tracer and three lymph nodes. But this is one institutional series. And uh, as I said, currently the uh, guidelines as, uh, as we already spoke. Now, if you go to the last sentence, uh, consensus of, uh, from the last year in St. Gallen, and uh, this is a slide that should, uh, I mean, uh, we should take a minute maybe to read it. And uh, we see that uh, how to approach to the axilla by this uh, consensus um, related to the status of the of the lymph nodes. So in those that are clinically node negative before treatment and after treatment, you simply do the usual sentinel lymph node technique and no additional surgery should be done if the uh, sentinel node is negative. If it's positive, then you can, uh, it's preferred to do the uh, uh, lymph node dissection, so surgery, or you can also do the radiotherapy of the axilla. This is more or less related to the results of, for instance, Amaro's trial. Even in this case, uh, if the lymph nodes were all along the patient's history negative. If you had positive lymph nodes before the treatment and they become negative clinically, it means also with the same imaging technique in this case, uh, then it depends what's the final result. If it's uh, of if it's negative and being before uh, positive, then you should consider the radiation of the axilla. If it's positive, even after the neoadjuvant, then you should do uh, whether the dissection or the radiation. Now, uh, but if you uh, find it positive before surgery after neoadjuvant by some technique, if you redo, recheck the axilla by ultrasound or some other technique and do the uh, uh, biopsy and it's positive, then you should proceed directly to the axillary lymph node dissection, and which is also important. So the the um, uh, rule of micrometastasis does not. Uh, it's not valid uh, for the patients after neoadjuvant, uh, and even in the case of micrometastasis, and uh, most of people advocate even if you have isolated tumor cells, you should do the dissection uh, of the axilla after the neoadjuvant treatment. So next slide, please. Um, and having said all what's been done so far, of course, Currently, the idea is how, which approach should we take in order to to even further reduce the uh, uh, the rate of axillary lymph node dissection? I mean, the 
we all know that the biggest advance was done with the um, with the introduction of this technique in, in usual cancer patients. And now slowly we go in different subgroups of patients to further reduce uh, the dissection rate and all the um, um, late uh, sequelas and uh, problems that patients have with the dissection. And now we are talking about uh, this uh, particular subgroup of patients. And of course, the idea how to, to really reliably uh, reliably um, stage the axilla after new adjuvant, uh, not to leave the disease behind, uh, to further uh, lower the false negative rate. Of course, it's the so-called targeted. There are different uh, words about that, targeted lymph node uh, removal. And the idea is that you mark the positive lymph node prior to new adjuvant chemotherapy, and then after the new adjuvant, when you do the surgery, you remove uh, the marked lymph node, and of course, ideally, also the sentinel lymph node, which, as we will see, it's it's not necessarily the same. Next slide. There's there were first studies uh, that were uh, published published results on this approach. Um, very famous is the Alliance trial, then it's the uh, MARI technique from uh, Netherlands, and of course there's the, uh, there's the study from the, uh, uh, from the uh, MD Anderson, and there is uh, in um, um, this meta-analysis actually, uh, or um, when everything, all these trials were put together, we can see that there's a lot of publication on different approaches, how to First, mark the, clip, uh, the uh, positive lymph node, and second, how to remove it. Uh, one of them here, which is also interesting, it's, uh, next slide, please. It's also the ELINA trial. Uh, this is from uh, Spain, from uh, Isabel Rubio, and they were using the US guided, uh, ultrasound guided um, technique uh, when they had some um, uh, specific a specific marker for the ultrasound, and their result was also very good. This was recently published, and I like that study. Okay, next slide. Now, there is a system, as you see, this was a study, a systematic review and meta-analysis of, of different surgical procedures to staging after new adjuvant therapy. Uh, therapy. And uh, the conclusion was that actually the axillary staging by combination procedure consisted for sentinel lymph node with excision of pre-marked positive lymph node appears to be the most accurate way to stage the axilla after new adjuvant. Uh, and uh, however, as they said, we need more trials. And now, uh, before I will finish, I will shortly, first, just for illustration, this is the Dutch technique to how to mark the uh, uh, lymph node. They use the iodine seed. Uh, the nice thing about this is, although I have no experience personally with that, but not the nice thing with this is that you put inside this radioactive seed, uh, which is long living because it's iodine. So it lives there uh, through the whole new adjunct chemotherapy, chemotherapy, and then you take it out as usually uh, with the gamma probe. But this is the, uh, nevertheless uh, posing some other uh, problems of organizing all the stuff, and, but nevertheless, they, they publish very nice results. And uh, uh, going back, next next slide, please. Going back, now, uh, as I said, there are new techniques now being studied uh, and trials going on, how to further, uh, how to further um, improve uh, this um, strategy, so to mark the positive lymph nodes and then to take it out. And there are several uh, trials going on. The first is the RISA's trial from Netherlands, and that is uh, combining the uh, MARI technique that I've shown you before with the iodine seed plus the usual sentinel lymph node biopsy, and uh, they would like to show that this combination it's it's um, um, uh, it's reliable uh, and and technically uh, feasible. So the next one it's. Uh, technique with tattooing. Interesting, there are two trials going on with tattooing the uh, positive lymph nodes, one in uh, Germany and the other one in the UK. And uh, these are trials that are going on. And the, 
the others are more or less being, I think, proposed or uh, before they started. So it's to to put the radio frequency track into the lymph node or even the magnetic or so magnetic material to use not the radioactivity but the uh, the other technique that can be used for the central lymph node biopsy. Um, now next slide. This is the illustration, or not, it's from publication actually, which is describing the RISAS Dutch trial. And uh, of course, they, they have no results so far, and uh, we're very eager to see them when they will finish, how this combination with the uh, Yodine seed plus the usual certain lymph node will uh, function, or what kind of results they will show. Next slide, just an illustration. Um, of um, tattooing the lymph node. Um, uh, <laughs> also, it will be very interesting to see the results of these trials, although tattooing, it seems a bit technically, at least to me, outdated, thinking also to the surgery of non palpable lesions when this was one of the techniques to do the carbon inside. Uh, once now we have a, 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 at least more of uh, sophisticated method that probably uh, should be used. But nevertheless, let's wait for the uh, results of the those two trials that are going on. Now, uh, now, finishing this talk is actually, uh, if we said uh, what, uh, how to approach the uh, ax axilla and to perform the uh, central lymph node biopsy or targeted and so on, what to do with the patients uh, after we have now staged the axilla. And of course, this is uh, additional uh, uh, how to do the regional, uh, local regional, particularly regional therapy after the surgery in these cases. And there are two big trials, I uh, both of them recruiting, I would like to um, um, show it to you. The first one is, of course, the American Alliance trial that um, randomizes patients after uh, being positive for the sentinel lymph node after new adjuvant chemotherapy to whether dissection, so surgery, plus radiation of the other regional nodes, or radiation to the axilla and additional radiation for the other regional nodes. So uh, this is studying uh, whether the radiotherapy to the uh, axillary lymph nodes is equal um, or not inferior to the dissection, and of course, with a focus also on the side effects of both, both treatments. And then, of course, we have to uh, to also mention the Texas trial. This is a European trial, as you know, um, and uh, it's a very complex trial. However, the main idea again is that uh, you do the um, if you have the positive lymph node after the to first to use some sort of the tailored X-ray surgery. It means. Uh, clipped or uh, marked or whatever lymph node, if it's positive randomization again to the dissection versus no dissection and uh, then uh, radiation of the regional nodes after the dissection of the other regional nodes. And if not in, in the group of no dissection, of course, also to do uh, radiation of the axilla. So this is uh, trials going on. What to do re uh, local regionally after the uh, positive sentinel lymph I hate to interrupt you, Dr. Zagnar, but we're four minutes uh, out of time. This is the last slide. Okay. So optimal surgical treatment of axillary lymph nodes after new, in new adjuvant is still a research question. Optimal combination of uh, local regional treatments after new adjuvant remains a research question. Nevertheless, altogether leads actually to less surgical treatment of axillary lymph nodes after new adjuvant. So this is, uh, this is my talk and thank you and sorry for the delay.